Hi, good morning, Jesse. Good morning, Kelly. We've had some tickets about a specific way to email patrons. And today we're going to show them how to use this new plugin that Kyle has created called the Patron Email Plugin. Now you can access the Patron Email Plugin um, from either the Bywater Solutions website or you can go directly to the GitHub Bywater Solutions site. And Kelly's going to pull that up for you. That is github.com slash bywatersolutions.com. Here you will see, this will show you all of our plugins that we have, and this one will show you specifically the emailer plugin. This email plugin um, will show you how to download and install that directly into your Koha system. Of course, you could always submit a ticket, um, and Bywater Solutions staff can install that plugin for you. Um, by clicking on the release tab, you can see there, Kelly's highlighting over that one, that will allow you to download that directly. Um, so again, you can come here and uh, download that particular plugin um, and then come over to your uh, staff client where we can go into Koha administration and then underneath our um, plugins for system preferences. We want to first make sure that that is enabled. We have use Koha plugins. Excellent. Um, yeah. And then the second thing we'll want to do is we'll want to make sure that we go back to either um, administration or tools. And from there, we can make sure that we upload that um, plugin correctly. So there you can see plugins, manage plugin, um, and that will allow us to upload it. So again, if you need any help, please just submit a ticket and we can install that plugin for you. Kelly? This is so exciting, isn't it, Jesse? Yes, it is very exciting. We both got a ticket in regards to how to specifically email patrons to say they had an outstanding amount in Koha. So we're gonna show you how you can do that today. So with this plugin, once you've done the installation, um, you will have the patron emailer plugin on your system. You have three different actions with the plugin. You have run tool, configure, and uninstall. Before we get to the actual plugin, we actually have to create a report to tell Koha what to put into this report and where to find it. Okay, so we're gonna go over to our reports. We have put step-by-step -step instructions and shown you our example SQL on this um, written out when you see this blog post as well. So I'm just gonna to go to my use save report and I'm gonna go way to my last one. And I have this one called emailer report notify people. Um, this is always something that you can make, create many reports if you wanted to um, with this um, plugin. So here with this report, I have just it's telling Koha to select the card number, which is the mandatory field for this plugin. You must have your card number in this SQL. And I'm asking it to pull the first name, last name, and then looking at those amount outstanding in fines. Then um, I have it ordering and it's, I'm having my report so I can go ahead and, and put in an amount of money if they owe a specific amount to run this report on there. Now, another thing I'd like to point out is um, with this plugin tool, we actually need to define the specific columns that it's using. So as I'm using my amount outstanding, I'm going to tell Koha that that is fines, and I'll show you how important that is when we get into the configuring the plugin. Okay. Excellent. What's our next step, Jesse? Okay, so once we have that report created, let's go in and let's run that report. Once we run that report, um, in our case, it's going to prompt us to ask how much we want to see in fines. Um, now, of course, you may be running a report that's just going to display the data, but in our case, we're going to look at this. So let's run that report. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come down and we can see our information. Now we're going to download it. 
So the first option we have is comma separated text that will download a CSV file for us. That is what we need to upload our file into the configuration tool. So once we have that report downloaded, our next step is going to be to actually go back to the plugin so we can go and set up our email that will be going out to our patrons. So funny, it's in both tools and administration. Yep, so if you forget, you can get there both ways. <laughs> so our first step will be to configure the, the actual email that's going to be sent to the patrons. So we have one already um, slightly configured. We have one that's the email subject is outstanding money. Once again, this is all free text. You can choose what you want. Um, but what's important is these, um, what are these called, syntax? Yes. So I'm going to say take from my report first name, which is one of the columns in my report. And I wanted to take the fines from my report. And that is another column. So I'm saying to type in, hey, the first name, my text, the fines, and then the rest of my um, email. Maybe we should show them that email, how it looks, the report. Yes, let's take, let's take a look at that because then they can understand. Sometimes we talk about the column name in the schema. Um, in this case, we're using the actual column name that's in the report. So our column name is surname and our column name is fines. Those are the two things that, um, excuse me, first name and fines that we're using for our report. So you want to make sure that those match. Okay, great. So now we've looked at the, um, so now you know that I always have to have that column card number. I'm using my first name and I'm using that fines column. And I would put that in there at this syntax and it needs to have a hard bracket, a percentage sign, a space, the actual column name, space, the percentage sign and a hard bracket. That's important to note. They give you a nice um, description down here. Then I go ahead and save my configuration. Okay, what's our next step? This is so exciting. Okay, so now once you've saved, you'll be taken back to the plugins main screen. So now we want to hit that actions drop down menu and we actually want to run the tool. Once we click run the tool, we're going to be prompted to actually upload that file that we ran our report with. So now we can come in, select choose file, grab that finds or whatever the name of your report was, um, and then come in and grab that report and Absolutely, grab it in there, select upload, and that will upload your report and send out your messages. So here you get a confirmation. It says your emails have been scheduled for delivery. Um, now there's two different ways that you can determine what emails were actually sent. The first is by going to a patron's, uh, a patron's account. Um, this will allow us to look at their details and we could actually click their notices tab and see the email that was sent out. So if we click that notices, um, that allows us to go in um, and then see any type of email that's been sent. So just like any other one, we can select that and open it up. Perfect. Now there's a second way to do this. You could absolutely write a report that would allow you to go in and pull that information in. So if we select reports, um, Kelly and I have added a report in here that will actually show you the um, checking that email or message that went out. And again, we'll provide that report in our example if you want to use that. Um, of course, Bywater Solutions would always be happy to write that report for you um, if you need a little help. So for this one, we're going to put in what our subject was. So this allows us to look up a specific report. So now we can come in here, run that report, and then this will show you those emails that were sent out um, to our individual. So you can see it gives us the syntax, the email, and then of course the status is pending until they're sent. Perfect. This is a great tool, and I think that a lot of libraries will be able to use this for specific um, emails they want to send out. Somebody brought up book clubs. Um, now, again, you can see that there's only one um, template that can be used at a time. So we suggest is just copying and paste and keeping your um, templates in another location. Uh, good point. Um, some people have said they're going to use you know, Google Docs and, and throw that um, 
a compilation in there so you can just copy and paste them really quickly, that's a great idea. Um, if you need any help setting up the patron plugin, please feel free to contact Bywater Solutions, submit a ticket, um, and we'll be able to set that up for you. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks, Jesse.